All right, guys. We are live. And we got a trailer coming up tonight for some new Fire Emblem heroes, if we take a look here. So on the calendar, it says that we have a new banner dropping on the 15th. So <laughs> pretty much tonight is going to be the trailer. And then tomorrow, we'll get the data mine. And then the reset right after that is going to be the banner. So the <laughs> new heroes on the way have no idea who they're going to be. But I mean, they're certainly going to surprise us. All right, let's take a look at this. Any defenses to take a look at here? Oh, great. Another minus 75. I wonder who this could be. Emblem Mike? Let's see what happened here. All right, what's going on, chat? <laughs> we got ZX. Trailer when? Trailer should be in about an hour from now. All right, Gonzalez. What's up, man? Dragon King 116. Orange Juice Lord. We got Chris Lee in the house. Rhea B, or is that Raya B? Or is that Rehab? <laughs> Many different ways you could say that. I probably said it wrong every single time. All right, Gay Frog. What's up, Gay Frog? Leo Altavez. What's up? Okay, so let's see. What, what do we got going on here? Oh, no Emblem Ike. Surprising. Instead, we have Goto and the Winter Byleth here at plus four. Goto's at plus two. We've got also Nerthus. We've got Winter Edelgard and Gulvig. Ooh, this is a... Th this is kind of like a hybrid team here. He's got like two Gale Forcers, and then he's got some defense here. Well, actually three if we count Nerthus as a Gale Forcer. All right, yeah, the hybrid teams are pretty cool. I'm surprised he's running the Bolt Tower on <laughs> Dark Season, though. Typically, people don't use the Bolt Tower in Dark Season because of... Oh, uh, what's his face? Because of Medeus, right? So, like, <laughs> th that gave me the go-ahead to just run all of these save units without having to worry. But once in a while, you do run into people that still run the Bolt Tower regardless of Medeus. And <laughs> that is going to make us pay for that here. All right, Nils Frazier. Yo, how's it going, Tacho? It's going pretty good, Nils. How you doing? Hopefully pretty good. We got Dyslexia here saying hi. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? And <laughs> doing pretty good. Ian Kimball, what's up, man? Felipe Tatum, for the love of God, not Tamara. I blew more than enough orbs this month. I don't think it's gonna be engaged right now because the last banner we had was what? What was it last time for new heroes? It was Arcania, the one where we had the Atun Sheeta and. Who else was on that? Besides Shido, who else was even on that banner? Merrick, I think. Attuned, or um, Ascended Merrick and then two other bozos, Yulia and Arlen, I think it was. Yeah, so before the Arcania banner, I think it was engaged. It was the um, Illusia banner. So I don't, I don't think they're going to do engage again so quickly. I think what we're looking at is probably going to be either Fates or maybe Echoes, depending on which game they think is going to be more popular. Probably Echoes. It's been a while since we've actually had a New Heroes Echoes banner. All right, Orange Juice says another Raya alt win. <laughs> Whenever KCB's wallet recovers from the last time he summoned for a Raya. All right, Bolt Tower MVP this match. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> There's not really a way you can defend against it without Medius, who I am not running here. All right, but shout-outs to him. He did it with a hybrid team. At least he didn't use Emblem Mike, so I, I'm not going to be mad at that. All right, why don't we hop in and start doing some of these fights now. Let's get some of these fights in. All right, for Resonant Battles, this is what we're going to be running this time. A right, small bacon. I just want base Dorothea. Oh, I guess three houses is a possibility too, right? I didn't even think about that. I, I would be opposed to three houses right now, though. I, I feel like three houses can... They could give three houses a break for like two years straight, and it would feel like perfectly fine, considering how many times we've had three houses units. Okay, what do we want to do here? Let's let's think about this. All 
Uh, it's really hard to... This is such a, a wall, a blockade here. It, it's, it makes it look like you have to go up either the middle or the right side. Yeah, I, I guess we might as well. Okay, let's start with this. Let's just... Who do we attack with? Krom here? Uh, yeah, if we attack with Krom, we can Kanto him up too, right? I think so. Because we got plus one movement just now from my green. All right, Justin Bernard Bernardin. Am I saying that right? Is it Bernardin? All right, he says, save four is incoming. Trust. <laughs> oh, God, please, no. No, well, save four, imagine save four. Y you have the save effect, and then you're getting your stats up four, and then on top of that, it nullifies melt damage. <laughs> like, you don't take pre-combat damage from, like, Duo Leon's effect or... Flared Sparrow or like any of the other nonsense. <laughs> That'd be something. Okay, why don't we get rid of the old lady there? Just so we don't get jumped or Krom doesn't get jumped. Not that it matters. I mean, he, he should have Prime 4 up, right? Yeah, he's got like a billion bonuses right now. He could be okay against her. Alright, let's, let's just do it anyway though. Let's... <laughs> make extra sure that we're safe here. All right, Daniel says, I only have 10 orbs. Bro, I have less than that. <laughs> I think I have like two orbs right now. I had a little bit more, but then I summoned on the baby banner to try and get a copy of the, the duo hero so I could have like more options against Ike. And mainly for defense, like I don't really care about dealing with Ike in SD or... Like Arena Assault and stuff like that. He's pretty easy there. Well, I shouldn't say easy, but he's definitely manageable there. <laughs> the real problem with Ike is trying to beat him when you're setting up an Aether Raids defense team and you got to beat him there. Otherwise, it's just like minus 75 constantly. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, Huh. How do we want to do this? What does she... Does she give herself... No, she doesn't give cooldown reduction. We could do it anyway, though. I think we'll get treachery here. We should be able to blow up that fear over there. Okay, yes, we can. All right, Cyberboy says, Hey, what's up, Tacho? <laughs> or Tachonator. <laughs> I'm the Tachonator now. I'm like... <laughs> the Terminator, except Tacho style. All right, Nils says, I skipped babies and double special heroes, so I have like 100 orbs now. By the way, I summoned on the baby banner, and I didn't get the duo hero, so I'm probably going to have to summon up to the spark to get her, and I'm going to just wait until we get more free-to-play orbs to be able to do that. Orange Juice says, more Laguz 4 fodder. That would be nice. I mean, we, or, <laughs> does he mean Lagoo's friend, the B skill, or does he mean more fodder for Lagoo's type units? Because I, I, we kind of need both. Neil Marvin says, your thoughts about having a unit that uses the bolt tower effect? You can literally move that unit anywhere in the map and cause havoc. Well, we already have that, right? It's <laughs> Duo Hector and Duo Lift. They have that built into their duo skill. The The problem, though, is that their duo skills are kind of booty. Not so much. Like, actually, their duo skills are pretty good. It's just that their limited range makes it kind of tough to use, particularly in summoner duels where, like, Hector's, for example, is only three columns centered on him. It's not like three columns and three rows. So, on a map like this where you start at the bottom and the enemies are on the top, it's fine. But in most of the SD maps, the enemies are going to be like on the left-hand corner. And then you're on the right-hand corner or vice versa. So, it's tough to use it there. Oh, actually, we I think we win right here, right? Yeah, we've got all the thieves in range here. Gomi Von Vade says, Dawn Brigade Banner win. 
I have no idea. I don't think those guys were particularly popular. Although I know a lot of people want them. I wouldn't be opposed to Nolan and Edward. I think those guys would be pretty awesome. <laughs> but a lot of the stuff I want from Radiant Dawn and Tellius in general is just more of the Laguz units. So, like, let's get Nazir, let's get Gifka, let's get Skramir. <laughs> like, all of those awesome Laguz characters. Where is Janath and Ulki? Like, come on, they were so good in Path of Radiance. Where's Volug, like the master of abs himself? Oh, Volug, we don't have him yet either. There's so many characters from Tellius. We don't even have base Degencia. Like, we have him locked to a Halloween ult. That's not cool. He's literally, like, one of the baddest dragons in the whole series. Okay, this first fight is not going to be fun. I ended up building this female Kana, by the way. I got her to plus 10 for arena scoring purposes, and I just gave her whatever skills I had on hand. <laughs> so, for the time being, she can score pretty good. The problem, though, is that her defense really sucks. <laughs> so, really, I've just delegated her to being a ploy bot. At least she can contribute, though, when I have her with Lin. So, like, Lin is able to do the brave attack, and then we're getting bonus damage here from ploy. So, that should help us out a little. Also, we have to give some Earth Blessings here for our our Arena run. We're not doing Arena, by the way. We're doing Arena Assault. <laughs> but I had the Wind Blessing on because for a regular Arena, I was running Veronica as my bonus. <laughs> so I had the Wind Blessing on there. All right, but I've done my Arena run already, so we can go ahead and play with the Earth Blessing now. Alright, Dominic Yu says Assassin Volk would be badass, but yeah, Tellius units coming out is in Fey is hard cope. I mean, we did get Volk. We, we didn't get Assassin Volk. We got Path of Radiance Volk. <laughs> but at least we got him, though. I'm still pretty happy to have gotten him. He was pretty awesome, too, on release. He, had, he was the one who introduced lethality, right? So, like, <laughs> they definitely held it down for your boy. Okay, I'm just going to, like, stack my team here with... <laughs> or I'm going to stack all of our things here to be able to deal with Ike. <laughs> so let's just take, like, all of the damaging items that we can get. It's going to be tricky trying to beat Ike seven times, but I think we should be able to do it. All right, hold on. I think we can get better than that. 766. All right, Andre Serrano says, Radiant Dawn has a huge cast. <laughs> the Dawn Brigade is the lowest priority in their own game. I would agree with that. Yeah, like, if you think about Tellius, a lot of the best characters are the Lagoos, and unfortunately, <laughs> they have no faith in the Lagoos being able to sell outside of, like, a select few. So it's always Tibarn, it's always Nesala, it's always... Um... Who else? Lethe, they put her on, like, every banner. I don't understand why they're so opposed to giving other characters a chance. Because it's not like they know for a fact that other characters aren't going to sell if they don't give them a chance. Right? Like, how, how do they know that, like, Nazir wouldn't sell if they don't put him on a banner, right? Like, they, they have no way to know that. They don't have the data. So they might as well give it a try, right? Like, just put some new characters out and see who they can get to summon and who they can't. Sweater Puppies, what's up? <laughs> nice to see it making it in here. Orange Juice Lord says we get our share of Tellius units through the Altina voice lines. <laughs> Come on, that's not good enough. Oh boy, that's a problem. Okay, we can't do anything about Murr here. I wonder if Kana is able to bait Veronica. It's probably not a safe idea. Yeah, that's probably not safe at all. Huh. Let's see. Okay, let's try this. I don't think anyone is going to break this. <laughs> but I could be wrong, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Alright, yeah, I didn't think so. 
Okay, but they're just being annoying now. Alright, Nor says, hey, Tacho, I finally started Laments of Innocence. Ooh, that's a really rare one. <laughs> also, the Portrait of Ruin music in the background. Yep. Man, the DS Castlevania trilogy is... <laughs> like, just A1, man. Chef's Kiss. That trilogy is one of the greatest. Huh. Yeah, I... I don't really think there's a way that I can get in here. I just have to wait on them. <laughs> Which is annoying, because as soon as one of these things break, they could just, like, jump me. And then Tiki's of absolutely no help here. Alright, hopefully they don't break that, but... Okay, they didn't, but then Yuri... <laughs> yeah, Yuri is just gonna keep on doing that now. Great. Okay, but Veronica... Here's the thing now. Veronica, we would be able to attack her, but we gotta watch out for Warp Bubble here, so... Okay, if we get Lin over there, we would be able to do it, so let's... Okay, but then Kana's gonna have to bait both of these guys. I, I don't know if she can bait both of them. Ugh, this is tricky. <laughs> this is pretty tricky, but... Alright, let's give it a try. Oh... Oh, yeah, she gives Warp Bubble to the the highest defense unit also. <laughs> All right, so in, in other words, we're boned then. All right, yeah, there's no way Kana's going to be able to tank all of this. Maybe like one unit, but not all of them. <laughs> yeah, not even Yuri. And then her defense is so bad, too. All right, goal... Golan Solo says, Hey, Tasha, really enjoy all the content on your channel. Just watching something if you have an... Op or just wondering something if you have an opinion on it. But if you had a spare Emblem Marth, would you merge so he has plus one or give potent four to some other unit? Well, that depends because the merges you get on all of your Emblem heroes also adds to their stats with the Emblem Rings. So, like, that could be valuable if you want to go for a plus 10 in the future on an Emblem Hero. As far as, like, what I would say about Potent 4, though, I think... I don't really think that skill is that big of a game changer. It's really good on Marth himself because, of course, his weapon... Ha or was it his special? One of those things had the effect where he gets the full benefit of Potent 4 regardless of, like, any checks that are going on. Whereas all the other units in the game, they they have to meet a bunch of checks to get Potent 4 to really work the way you want it to. So I would probably go for the merge, but I wouldn't do it right away. I would actually hold on to the copy and wait a little bit, see what's like coming up on the horizon, and then make your decision after that. Okay, we got another far save unit here, but this guy is way less scary than Murr. So, hopefully this one isn't as bad. It's always this first fight, right? It's like, once you get past the first fight, you're good to go. Alright, Chris Lee says, another Altina all just to destroy Oblivion's wallet. <laughs> That's not very nice. How many Altinas can they release, though? They We just got the Desert one already. I'm surprised Altina's gotten as many alts as she has, by the way, considering... Like, how much relevance did she have in actual, like, Tellius games? She's in a cutscene, and that's basically it. It's pretty weird that we've gotten so many alts of her. But she is pretty badass, and she is pretty awesome, so... I am glad that if they were going to give a ton of alts to one person, it was her. Alright, Rogue Bladeed says a Fates Banner with a Yato Korin would be neat. Yes, actually, that would be really good. Oh, oh, this is... Hold on. We might be able to get rid of a bunch of units here. Problem is, I don't know if we can get rid of Deirdre. Right, why don't we just start by doing that so we yeah let, let's get rid of Duma here 
Then we can go ahead and pop our duo skill and get another action. Uh, Nor says we need a fourth Altina. <laughs> what other alts could they possibly give her, though? I feel like Altina's got enough alts as it is. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to getting more Altina alts, but... Okay, we're going to have to pop a bunch of these. Let's go for the Special Blade first. All right, that'll give Kana Ether here. Okay, that's good enough. All right, if we had to, I was going to pop the Lightning Charm too. Norse says, Spear Altina to complete the triangle. Ooh. <laughs> no, what we need is Staff Altina. Like a duo Staff Altina, Altina and Sephiren. <laughs> and then give her the Staff. People really want a Sephiran alt, or just like base Sephiran, because the only one that we have is the Winter one, I believe. And he's certainly a more relevant character than Altina, so... It is pretty weird that we've only gotten him once as an alt. Alright, this doesn't look too bad. <laughs> as long as we don't have to fight Ike, it's fine, I guess, but I I've got a bunch of units here ready to deal with him if he shows up. Okay, what do we do? Why don't we start with this? Let's go for this team here. Oh, by the way, I should talk about this. I forma this guy because he was available in one of the rounds. <laughs> so I just decked him out. I already had him at plus 10, but I just wanted to get some better skills. So I got no quarter. I got guidance four. I got firestorm dance. <laughs> some pretty good stuff here. And then the Kumo weapon so he can warp in. It really sucks that you can't get the arcane weapons, though. Like, that, they really should update the Hall of Forms to have arcane weapons. Especially at this point where, like, arcane weapons are hardly even relevant anymore, considering the insane amounts of weapon creep we've had. Huh, I... I was going to, like, repo Gulveg in and see if she could, like, blow up all of these guys, but then I don't think I'd be able to get her out of the way after that, so we'll just sit tight for this turn here. Calvin Nguyen says, Altina and Yune Duo. Oh, we already have that, though. Oh, wait, no, we don't have that. We have Altina and Sanaki Duo. Altina and Yune, huh? I feel like Altina would probably be with Ashura instead of Yune. If they were a duo. Because it was like Mikaya who was friends with Yune. And then Altina was on Ashura's side, right? <laughs> She's one of Ashura's three warriors. Alright, Chris Lee says, We'll get a new rearmed or echo unit on the banner, right? Maybe we can finally get an arcane axe for the slower axes. It seems to be trending that way. Like, they seem to be doing an Echo Hero or a Rearmed Hero on every banner. And then once in a while, they'll sprinkle in, like, <laughs> Ascended Heroes as well so we can get some Florets. But the trend has been, like, two special type of heroes per banner nowadays. So, like, an Echo and a Rearmed or an Echo and a Re... Or Echo and, um, Ascended or what, however they want to do it. Like, Ascended and Rearmed. There's a bunch of different combinations they can do. All right, let's just start by doing this. Okay, and Gulveig is... Oh, oh, why isn't Murr using her save effect here? Is there a reason why... Oh, wait, this is legendary Murr. This is not the... um, <laughs> This is not armored Murr. This is the legendary Murr. Okay, that certainly changes things a little. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Why is she not saving? All right, Nor says, can't wait for Castlevania Nocturne Season 2. Oh, I've never even finished watching the original Castlevania anime. <laughs> I watched the first season, and then I didn't watch the second one. And then I heard they started up the new series with Richter, which I, I would actually be more interested in that one because Richter is my favorite Belmont. <laughs> but I don't know. I, like... For whatever reason, I just never finished the original anime that they did. I think it was like four seasons long or something. It was either three or four seasons, but 
yeah, that's one that I definitely have to finish at some point. Cooper Reynolds says, I know it's not happening, but I want a meta-relevant Lucina. We already have a meta-relevant Lucina. It's the attuned one. Even if she is the second character in a duo, just something, please. Yeah, the, um, what, what you call it? The Arcane Lucina is actually really legit. <laughs> she is really good. I think I did a top 10 or top 5 units of every color video. I'm pretty sure I had that Lucina in there for... If not top 5 for green, she was at the very least an honorable mention. Alright, Golan Solo says Castlevania on Netflix is fire. All the seasons and Nocturne. The OG series, the animation get better by season. It was so good. Oh, that's actually cool to hear because the, I thought the first season the animation was pretty good already. So if it just keeps getting better, then that's definitely going to be awesome to see. Wacky Warrior, what's up, man? I want Sully to get anything. That is my single wish. <laughs> Always holding out for that Sully alt, huh? Wacky Warrior. What would they do with Sully? Like, how, how would we get a Sully alt? It would probably be like a duo Sully and Kiel. That would actually be fire. <laughs> that would be kind of fire. To get Sully and Kiel. Maybe eventually. I, I feel like that's something they could do. Like, they have that saved in their back pocket if they ever run out of ideas. <laughs> to just start dropping duo heroes where it's the parent and the child. There's still so many other heroes that they can release. It's it's insane how many characters Fire Emblem has. Like, that's one of the big things about this series. And look at this. <laughs> Baby Boo Boo here got fed an Ike here. So we got Lagoo's friend, Def Res finish, Attack Res ploy. I don't know why he went with Attack Res ploy on her. He probably would have preferred, like, Def Res ploy or something, but... We are a little bit limited on which ploys we have access to. I don't think we have attack and defense ploy yet. Yeah, so she reduces the effects of deep wounds. I, I love how she has the ability to get around that. <laughs> when it's... Like, th this is the first time where deep wounds has kind of been important to have. And now, immediately as soon as that happens, we have a unit that has a way around it. Okay, interesting stuff there from that baby Lissa. And then otherwise, it's a bunch of outdated bozos. Yeah, this guy. People always love talking about this guy, right? But I, I feel like he has fallen off so hard. Everyone just loves talking about him, though. Like, he's still as good as he was the day he refined, but <laughs> that hasn't been the case for quite some time. Okay, what do we want to do here? Let's see. Why don't we do this? Why don't we Ike it? <laughs> I feel like being a dick. Let's just... <laughs> like, all of these plus 10 insanely invested units, let's just Ike it. <laughs> the most demoralizing thing you can do to a person is this. <laughs> like, just Ike their team. Alright, Sweater Puppy says, It's insane how many characters we had before Faye. Now, all of a sudden, we have double that, including babies. Yeah, there's just so many possibilities that they can do with this game in terms of, like, what type of alts they can do, what sort of units they still haven't even released yet, and so on, and... I don't know when they're going to start, like, really getting more um, variety in the releases. Because it feels like we've stagnated quite a while ago. We've just been getting the same units over and over again with the same alts. And they don't really feel like giving other people a chance. Yeah, look at this. Color advantage, right? <laughs> Brave Dimitri is supposed to be so good. All his DR, he just gets one-shotted. <laughs> that will never be old to me. Like, just seeing a non-merge unit that I pulled in literally two summons, I got this guy. <laughs> and he just blows up a plus 10 invested. Like, crazy skills. That guy had some pretty good fodder on that unit. Just completely meaningless. <laughs> this is the kind of game that 
you don't let your accountants see you playing because <laughs> they're going to be questioning your investments here. All right, Dominic Yu says, by the way, did I miss something on the calendar? Are they not doing Legendary Remix this month? No, I don't think we're getting a remix this month, but we should next month. I'm not sure why that is. I, I think they're trying to, like, go every other month with the remixes, but there's not really a reason for them to do that. Because, I mean, it's not like <laughs> they're ever going to catch up with the remixes, right? We just get released so many units so often in this game. They really need to speed up the refines and the remixes. Alright, Golan Solo says, I hope we get the real Gawain or Grail unit someday before like 10 year anniversary. If Faye can even last that long. What anniversary are we up to? 7 or 8? I think it was. I doubt we're gonna... Actually, are we gonna get to the 10 year at the rate things are going right now with all of the player base that has completely quit the game out of like recent releases like Ike and Leon? interest in competitive play has taken a nosedive like all of the fate tubers are getting significantly less views than they used to i i think zashado put out a tier list for or yeah he, he put out a tier list for the heroic rail units and i remember he used to pull like 15k plus views on those back in the day and this one didn't even crack like 10k views i was like damn that was a pretty good tier list, too. I, I was like, wow. People are not, like, messing with this game right now that they don't care about the tier list. All right, Am I Mistake says, I hope they stop making popular characters, have more alts, and focus on units that never appear in-game. I agree. I think they need to, like, start giving, like, low-tier characters. Not to say, like, low-tier characters aren't popular, but... How are they going to know that if they don't give them a chance, right? Like, a lot of people playing Faye don't necessarily have, like, the vast knowledge of all the characters. Sometimes when you play Faye, like, that's your first introduction to a lot of the characters. So, I, I mean, this could be a chance to introduce new characters to... Or, like, the same old characters to new people as new characters. And maybe they like them, and maybe they summon Okay, no Ike once again. I'm surprised we haven't fought any Ikes at all so far. We're like five fights in here or something like that. All right, let's go ahead and get this one out of the way. Insane Mind says the Shadow is goaded for that. Yeah, I could not do what he does, man. <laughs> I am no Zashado. It just like the endurance to be able to put out that many videos and then also like the tier list that he put out had how many units on it? Like gotta be 200 units at least. <laughs> I don't think I have the mental fortitude to be able to <laughs> do a tier list for that many units all at once. That's why I tend to like break up mine. When, whenever I do a tier list of any sort I try to like break it up into batches. Instead of just, like, putting out every single unit all at once. Huh. I wonder if Yunaka can take out this Corrin. Oh, I guess we can't even find out. Alright, we'll just, we'll just wait it out. It's not like we have anything to worry about here. All right, Azu says, end of service, Reinhardt refined. <laughs> oh, man, when are they ever going to get to the refines of the, like, <laughs> all of the forgotten heroes that they skipped? So they skipped Surger, they skipped Reinhardt, they skipped Ophelia, <laughs> they skipped all of the staff units, and I have no idea why. There's, like, no reason to skip the staff units. And it's not like they skipped all of the staff units either. They skipped only the, like, demote ones. Because I think they gave the five-star staff units refines for the most part. <laughs> but, like, wh what is the big deal about, like, Lachesis getting an, a refine out of nowhere? Or, like, Reese getting a refine? <laughs> it's not like all of a sudden the game is busted. All right, Joshua Batar. Hey, Tacho. How's everything going? It's going pretty good. 
<laughs> We've been avoiding Ike this entire time, luckily. All right, this time we got some safe ball stuff going on here. Nice Veronica build there. I'm actually kind of disappointed. I did want to fight Ike at least once. Because <laughs> I've kind of built like all of my teams to have at least one way to deal with them. Huh. Alright, let's go for this one, I guess. Oh, actually, I'll save I Green for later. Let's save I Green for when we really need to deal with Ike. Actually, I'm not sure if these guys can deal with Mur. Ivy has a decent matchup, but like... Ho hold on, I, th I think we can probably do a little better to deal with Mur. Let's go for Leon instead. Leon just crushes her. All right, Andre Serrano says, I skipped refines in the Fey Hall of Fame. Or skipped refines is the Fey Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's like, if your refine was skipped, that means you're just too badass, I guess. And then you look at some of the newly released weapons that the units have and how many effects they do and like all the nonsense going on. I really can't think of any reason why they couldn't just <laughs> go ahead and refine like half of the units they skipped. All right, here we go with the X-ray button. Just end three units turns. Why not? <laughs> so like literally Veronica's the only one that can do anything now. Actually, we... I think we end Veronica's turn, too, after we attack, right? Because she has the highest speed. So, like, we just ended his entire... <laughs> his entire career here. We just demolished this guy. It's pretty rare to see, but it's also pretty satisfying to just end all... Like, every single one of their units, we ended all their turns in one, one go. Michael Bailey says, two heroes have Dire Thunder. I'm surprised it hasn't gotten a refine. Oh, did we get Veronica with that? Yeah, we did. Okay, good. All right, so now Veronica's turn is going to automatically end. Ooh, Zelgius is a bit of a problem here for Iris, so we'll... Let's see, where do we want uh, Ira here? I guess we'll put her right there. And look at this. Turn starts, <laughs> everyone just ends their turn. Oh my god, what a dumb unit. I love how he does all that, and he's like, even with all of that, he's still not as dumb as Emblem Mike somehow. What did they do? This game, th this game has just become complete nonsense. Right, Acid Cookies says, Crazy that they're so afraid of refining Reinhardt when his weapon description is like one line long. It's like the Fey version of Pot of Greed. Yeah, pretty much. But we've gotten like so many Brave Attack mages that I... There's no way they could possibly be afraid of that. I can't imagine them giving him anything that would make him like so good that it would be unhealthy for the game. It's, like, basically out of spite. It's because Reinhardt was such a good free-to-play unit for so long. They're like, oh, we, we hate this guy now. He lost us money. Because <laughs> they, they they thought they didn't have to spend on this unit. Or they didn't have to spend on mages for so long. So <laughs> let's just not refine this guy out of spite. All Might says, did you see Resplendent Burger King, though, Tacho? Yes, I did. <laughs> He's got some pretty nice artwork. I like the cape, too. I think they gave his cape, like, a fire effect, which was pretty rad. So we got a Moosepel, Moosepelian Burger King there. Okay, once again, we've somehow avoided fighting Emblem Ike. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, guys. I I'm trying my best to fight Ike, and it's not happening. Like, after all of this, now I do kind of want to fight him. <laughs> Just to beat him up. But, oh man. 
All right, Leo says, I think it's fair if you could inherit preferences from the same unit. Example, OG Krom can get to change. Ooh. That's not a bad idea. But that feature is Gacha locked like Florets. Um, how would that work? How would you Gacha lock skill inheritance? Like, you need a special item to be able to do that, and then... Let's say I could inherit Fallen Julia's weapon on any Julia, or like something like that. Or like this, co well, there's not a lot of Corins that have tomes, right? But like... Okay, so let, let, let's say we had um, the Halloween Corin with Negating Fang. Let's say I could somehow inherit Negating Fang 2 onto the OG base Corin from day one. That would be an interesting concept. I, I actually like that. But, of course they would money lock that, because that's a way to power up your favorites from way back when that people merged up and invested in. <laughs> so they, they would have to put, like, some kind of money gate behind that. Alright, Malik. <laughs> Malik Ishtar. They probably going to give Reinhardt a bad refine anyway, knowing Insys. Well, it would stick out like a sore thumb at this point, considering how long they waited to do it. Like, if they refine him now and his refine is only, like, death blow 4, like, initiate combat, get plus 8 attack, it would stick out like a sore thumb. Everyone would notice it. Because look at this unit's refine. Look at this. <laughs> this is just a wall of text. And she's not even that re... Well, she's kind of recent, right? She didn't get refined that long ago. It was only like a couple of months. And already this unit's outdated. Well, I, I guess you could give her Lagoo's Friend, right? Like, Lagoo's Friend plus Negating Fang 2 probably works pretty decently. But then it cuts her... Does her weapon have DR on it? Actually, no. Her weapon does not have pierceable DR. She's got, like, true DR there, and then she has... Just a bunch of stats, pretty much. Yeah, no, dude, Lagoo's fang or Lagoo's friend would work out pretty good on this Corin. All right, Leo says, yeah, you need currency like a floret. <laughs> I mean, they they're just like trying to come up with as many ways they can monetize the game as they can, pretty much. At least that's what it feels like. Idiot 23? Or no, that's... <laughs> my bad, bro. I, I read that as idiot. It's... I, I think it's Idwa. Is that French? <laughs> now I'm gonna be... I'm the one who sounds like an idiot now. Alright, he says, Hello, I have a question. Is Winter Violet still good? Can it tank the new Duo Robin? Winter Violet is definitely still good. I don't know how they match up against Duo Robin, but... They match up pretty good against a lot of other units, like Duo Leon and stuff like that. So, I would say Winter Byleth is definitely still a good unit. Calvin says they won't do it like what they did with Blazing Durandal Elliewood. Yeah, wh what they did for that Elliewood was pretty uncommon. In fact, I'm not even sure why they did that in that particular way, because Brave Roy was... Literally a brave hero who just got a refine, and then for some unexplicable reason, his dad just stole his refine. <laughs> they would never do something like that today. They'd just like give a free to play unit the same refine as a brave unit. <laughs> like, could you imagine if the. What would be the example here? I, I guess, like, if the regular. Day one Corin was able to get Negating Fang 2 or something like that. Oh, I, I didn't think Ivy just like blows her up like that, but I guess she does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Ivy is something else, ain't she? Am I Mistake says they should fix pair up. It's useless outside training tower and story mode. <laughs> Gay Frog, LMAO, that made my night. 
All right, you, you guys can just make fun of my <laughs> terrible pronunciations of things. Our boy Edouard from France. <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry, but I I don't know how to say that. Is I D O I T? Like, how do you say that? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> I'm I'm just a dumb American, man. Oh wait, do we live here? Yeah, it looks like I okay. Yeah, we might as well just do it. Hakure or Hak Cure says Dungeons and Dragons music. No, this is actually Castlevania music. Dungeons and Dragons has music. I, isn't Dungeons and Dragons like a tabletop game? How does that have music? <laughs> does it have like an official soundtrack that you could play <laughs> while you're playing Dungeons and Dragons to make it like more realistic? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like playing Dungeons and Dragons, you got like a boombox in the back. <laughs> Bump into the bu the Dungeons and Dragons official CD. All right, here we go. We got one more fight, one more chance to find an emblem mic, and we did not. We did s literally seven arena fights, not a single emblem mic. I am disappointed. <laughs> I'm actually mad, guys. I. So what was the point of me Ike proofing all of these teams? <laughs> it's like we we didn't even need to do any of that. All right, Joshua says I hated fa facing Ike this season. He's so good, it's annoying. Got two copies and kept one, and ascended. Sheeta has Lagoose Friend Four, and so does my Summer Leon. Wyvern Katana Plus, no quarter with Emblem Mike, and then Distant Bonus Doubler, Lagoose Friend Four, and then Defres Pledge and Guard Echo. Yeah, it's a pretty good Summer Leon, <laughs> by the sounds of it. I think Guard Echo's DR gets cut in half though by Lagoose Friend. So that that sucks a little bit, but it's not really that big of a deal. Wyvern Katana is a really nice weapon on that Leon, by the way. Because <laughs> it gives him the non-pierceable... Or it, it gives him the um, Brave Attack, which is pretty effective. And then it gives him, like, Def Res up 5. Oh, they have... St oh... It's a good thing I noticed that in time. They have Mark for stall there. Yeah, and we have Igreen here who can get hurt by stall, so we want to make sure we're not messing up here. All right, we'll just wait for them to come down. <laughs> Full Circle says Baldur's Gate music. I've never actually played Baldur's Gate. Didn't Baldur's Gate get blown out by Palworld, I think? No, something got blown the hell out by um, Palworld. I remember when Palworld released on Steam, there was some other big game that came out at the time. I think it was Baldur's Gate or it was like Dragon's Gate or some, some kind of gate, right? So like that game came out at the same time as Palworld. And <laughs> of course, Palworld bodied them in sales. Like they got demolished. And they didn't even expect to. <laughs> like, they, they thought they were safe. They thought they were releasing the game at a good time when they wouldn't have to compete. <laughs> but nope. Oh, man, I love Pal World. I actually haven't played since the new update, though. Shoutouts in the chat to anyone who's played Pal World. <laughs> it's just Pokemon with more gusto, basically. Alright, iCard says, better safe than sorry. Justin Bernardin says, Legendary Roy was also underwhelming. Well, the thing about that, I feel like what they're planning to do is just, like, allow the Emblem variants to just be the good version of the character. <laughs> so, like, Emblem Ike, or all of the Ike units in the game sucked, and then they were like, okay, let's just release a really good Ike for once. And that was Emblem Ike. So I, I think we can look forward to all of the Emblem heroes being pretty insane. 
Okay, so we got a pretty solid score, actually. <laughs> we got kind of lucky with the the scores that we came up against there. And we got 10 minutes to go until the trailer, so I guess we can just chill out for a little. And <laughs> collect this one orb here. Shadow Demon says, Hey, Tacho. My prediction possibly fates with either a tuned or rearmed version of Corin with a new version of Yato. I was thinking Fates is a high possibility. I'm thinking for the attuned slash rearmed hero, we probably get one of the like sibling characters from Hoshido or Nor. So like Ryoma and Xander have not had alts in forever. And I could totally see them being possible candidates for the attuned treatment or the arcane treatment. Then there's also like the sub siblings or like the least important siblings like Hinoka, Camilla, <laughs> Takumi and Leo and like Sakura, Elise and like all of those guys. I, I feel like they are prime candidates for attuned and rearmed treatment. And it's been a very long time since we had a Takumi alt or a Leo alt or any of those characters. So I, I think we might be able to see one of them on this banner if it is Fates. All right, Insane Mind says, is it a good game to play? What's good about it? If you're talking about Pal World, then yeah, Pal World is basically just like Pokemon with Breath of the Wild gameplay mechanics. You can explore the entire map wherever you want. You're just going around collecting Pokemon and <laughs> battling with them, and you can breed them. The breeding mechanic is really good in Pal World. So yeah, there's just a lot of good stuff about Pal World. Uh, Zelda Mon King says, "What do people think the new banner is going to be?" I'm still thinking Fates, but there's a couple of other games it could also be. Fate seems to be the most likely, but we might also get like um. What what else could we get? <laughs> Besides fates, like Echoes hasn't had one in a while. Maybe Tellius, but I mean it, it's always like a crapshoot expecting Tellius. Right, Insane Mind says, would it be our first time having a fallen duo? Ooh, a fallen hero duo. They should start doing that, actually, on the fallen heroes banners. Like, give us a duo hero on there. Imagine that, having double fallen heroes. Oh, by the way, I chose the wrong team for this. I don't have a bonus hero here, so we're not scoring as high as we're supposed to. Spuck Pun says, didn't we have Takumi and Leo alts last year? <laughs> I remember Leo being decent enough. Yeah, we did actually have the Valentine ones. So we had Leo, Takumi, and then Sakura and Elise were the duo. But I, I feel like they could totally do another, like, alt of them. It hasn't been that long since we got that. Or it, it's been long enough, rather, since we got that. So they could totally do another banner of those characters. Particularly, I think, Leo and... um, Or not Leo. Uh, Ryoma and Xander, I think, they deserve alts because they haven't had any in a long time. Okay, this was the team that I meant to use here. <laughs> the one with Krom on. But the Fire Dragon has to be the main guy, though. He can't be the backpack. He has to be the unit. Oh, God. I can imagine it now. Like, Fire Dragon. He, he does a fix, like, 40 damage to the opponent at the start of combat. And then his attack just does, like, insane amounts of damage. But if any, any character was to get melt damage, I think Fire Dragon would be the guy, right? Gomi Von Vane says, my heart says TMS, but my mind says Fates. Oh, TMS would be a great choice right now. Hopefully they've acknowledged that TMS has been doing pretty good in the Hall of Forms, right? Or not Hall of Forms, in the 
Hero Rises events and well not Hero Rises either the what is it called again what's the one I'm thinking of <laughs> the one where we vote and then the TMS characters have always been doing pretty good <laughs> there's like so many goddamn voting events in this game I can't keep a track on what they're all called by the way I did this I built up this Ashnard here <laughs> so we got Gambit we got Rain Snap we got Gergarant I gave him a boatload of flowers here, <laughs> so my Ashnard is cooking. This guy's refine is something else. If only I could get Soaring Echo on him too, that would just complete everything. But he's pretty fire. Like this guy, he is damn near unkillable. He's really tanky. And then he's got all this support effects, so he's a really nice unit right now. Choose your legends. Yes, CYL. That's what I was thinking of. I can't believe I forgot the name of that one. That's like the most important one, too. Like, out of all the voting events in this game, that is the most important one. All right, Acid Cookies says, TMS and Warriors don't exist to them. Shaking my head. Well, Warriors won. I don't think they care about. <laughs> because no one wants the Lemon Twins. That's really the only thing they could give us from Warriors 1. <laughs> Just those lemon heads and also Darius, who would actually be pretty fire. And then from Warriors 2, they seem to be dipping into that well quite a bit because we've gotten a lot of characters from that game. It's really just Three Houses favoritism. If Warriors 2 was not Three Houses themed, I doubt they would have cared to do banners for it. <laughs> but of course, they gotta sell us 50 copies of Edelgard. Alright, ABZ Temo says no Wyvern Flight. Nah, I, I opted for Gambit 4 because... Well, first of all, I don't even have Wyvern Flight fodder. <laughs> so, Gambit 4 came with Rain Snap, so I decided to just go with that. Because I had pulled a copy of the Halloween Anna from the double special banner that had her. And Rain Snap, I mean, the combo of having Rain Snap and Soaring Echo is really strong. So, like, that's a really good thing you can do for Ashnard. So, he has movement, uh, movement support, and then he also has warp support. He could just be, like, the ultimate movement bot. Alright, Gay Frog says, I think Fallen Robin or Grima Duo could be cool. Oh, yeah, that's, that's another thing, too. They could do, like, Ro Fallen Robin and Grima, or, like, Robin and Validar, or, like, even Robin and Morgan, like, both of them as Fallen heroes. Whenever I think about, like, all the different combinations and all, like, the cool unit releases that they could do and the fact that they're not doing them, it just makes me more mad. More mad about, like, how typical and how cookie cutter the releases are just the same characters over and over and <laughs> nothing new nothing special all right gomi von vein fallen darios would go hard yeah just darios in general he was pretty cool <laughs> it's too bad he's from a game that they don't want to acknowledge Oh boy, Ike versus that unit there, one-on-one. -on -one. I love how they made this last map so annoying. <laughs> they put a bunch of rally bots on the team so that they could make sure that the duo hero gets their effects off. And we got one minute to go until trailer. Okay, so let's start refreshing our... Uh, what you call it here, our X accounts. And also YouTube. No spoilers, by the way, if the trailer is already up. Right, I'm not seeing it on X yet. And I'm not seeing it on YouTube yet either. Alright, trailer, trailer, trailer. <laughs> Can anyone find the trailer? Yo, imagine the trailer is not tonight. 
<laughs> like, I, I would feel pretty bad about that. I'm pretty sure there's a trailer tonight. What, what if it's not tonight? What if the trailer's tomorrow night for some reason? All right, has anyone in the chat found the trailer? Because I'm re- Oh, actually, I found it now. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Took a bit of looking around, but I finally have found the trailer, guys. Okay, so we are good to go here. We Gucci. Alrighty, folks, we are back for another episode of the Tacho Show, and we got a new trailer here for Fire Emblem Heroes, so... Let's go ahead and run this bad boy and see what's up. Now, as far as predictions are concerned, I have no idea. There's a lot of things that it could be. As for what I would hope it is, I, I don't really have any hopes, but I'm thinking Fates. My money is on Fates. And it is Fates. Okay, so we start off with a Mozu here. Is that Mozu? Yes, it is. Okay, so we got Mozu as a Lance Infantry type. Okay. Now, I've always wondered why they never released Mozu. Because <laughs> I, I feel like Mozu was more popular than Midori. I don't know. I, I haven't played Fates, but I, I've seen, like, more stuff of Mozu than... Like, in Cypher, there's more, like, cards of Mozu than there is of Midori, I think. Alright, so what do we got going on from our girl Mozu here? Oh, her stats, by the way. Okay, so we got 40 HP. And then we're getting a boatload of stats. I... I have no idea what her bonuses are outside of the C skill. So let's say 60 attack. And then 46 for speed. And then probably defense and res up 6 as well. So like 41 defense and then 27 res. That seems about right. Alright, so she's basically built like a god lance I would say here. Alright, Forager Naginata. 16 might, 1 range. Minus one special trigger. At the start of the turn, if unit's HP is over 25%. Port is pretty rare, so that's nice to get that. All right, then also at the start of combat, if unit's HP is over 25%, grants all stats of 5 to unit. An additional... All stats of X to unit, where X is the number of allies in three spaces a unit, times three plus one for a max of ten. And then if any space in two spaces of unit has a divine vein effect applied or counts as difficult terrain, excluding impassable terrain, values treated as ten. Okay, so it's going to be real easy, in other words, to get the full ten here, is what it sounds like. Then also reduces damage from foe's first attacks by X in combat, where the first attack is also including brave attacks here. When unit deals damage to the foe during combat, recovers X HP to unit. So I'm guessing X is this, right? So X is a max of 10. So she has 10 points of flat DR and then 10 points of healing. Which is pretty good. So uh, good numbers there. All right, then we got Bonfire. We got Bonus Doubler 4. I, I love how they've gone back to Bonus Doubler 4 when they made it completely obsolete with Distant Bonus Doubler. <laughs> so... I mean, if you want an obsolete A skill, I guess go for that. All right, then we got Attack and Speed Bulwark 4. That, that's a skill that people have been waiting on. Just for the stat combo there, Attack and Speed is pretty nice for Bulwark. All right, so Mozu seems okay. Pretty solid fodder. Seems like an okay weapon there. What she really wants is Lagoo's Friend 4, though, probably. Okay, Puppet Master. I don't know who the hell this guy is. <laughs> Yukimura. <laughs> like Sanada Yukimura. Okay, so he is a dagger type, and he's also a cavalry type. <laughs> the artist is Double D right there. I, I approve that name. I've never heard of that artist, though. Okay, so there's a puppet master in Fates. I, I never knew about that. Interesting. <laughs> but didn't we just... W weren't we just talking about, like, characters that are... Not getting spotlight, finally getting some spotlight, and it seems like that's what's going on here. 
So 45 HP, we got, or he's getting plus 5 from boost 4, so actually 40 HP. And we have 60 attack, we got 16 speed, we got 33 defense, and then 45 res. Okay. That's an interesting stat line for a cav range type. Alright, pers perspicacious? Is that how you say that? Alright, 14 might, 2 range, minus 1 special trigger, grants attack defensive res of 4, and reduce damage by... Or reduce the percentage of foes non-special DR by 30%. To allies in 7 rows and 7 columns centered on unit. Wow. That's not a start of turn bonus. That's just an in-combat drive. That, uh, <laughs> so we're getting drive DR cut now. In a massive radius of effect. 7 rows and 7 columns is a lot. <laughs> Might as well just say all allies get this effect. The defense is nice, like, getting defense and res and attack of four. Th this is really nice for, like, tanking units. All right, then also at the start of combat, if units' HP is over 25%, inflicts a penalty on foes' attack and defense, equal to the number of allies in seven rows and seven columns centered on unit times three plus six, with a max of 15. And also reduces the percentage of foes' non-special DR by half, and grants special cooldown charge plus one to unit per attack during combat. These are pretty good effects for a cavalry type because he wouldn't be able to get, like, the B skills that cut DR in half anyway, like Tempo 4 or Physical Null Follow-Up. So you're free to just give this guy Assassin Strike and then he already cuts DR anyway. So lots and lots of DPS there. No guaranteed follow-ups, though. Hmm. And then he wasn't fast. He was, like, all attack, defense, and res. So... Maybe it'll be hard. You're going to want to have him with, like, pre-charged specials so he can nuke that way. Oh, who is this? Diviner of Repu. Never heard of them. Okay, Hayato. <laughs> I have never even seen this character. So, <laughs> drawn by Tapioca. We have a Red Tome infantry type. This seems like they're going to be the demo character. If anyone's played Fates, what is the theme of this banner? Because I'm, I'm sure all of these characters that I've never heard of have some kind of theme going on that they share in common. Alright, we got 39 HP there, 55 attack, 45 speed, 24 defense, and then 31 res. Okay. Alright, Rower Lantern Plus, new inheritable tome here, 12 might and 2 range. At the start of turn, if units in two spaces of an ally, grants... Unit can't be slowed by terrain and acceleration per hit for one turn. And if unit initiates combat or is in two spaces of an ally, grants attack and res of five. <laughs> okay, it's booty. That's booty. All right, then we got Moonbow, attack and speed ideal three, and then wind sweep. Oh, wind sweep is really nice fodder to get to the demo pool. Instead of ideal, they couldn't give him finish, like attack speed finish three. <laughs> they really couldn't do that. Or even attack and speed clash three would have been nice. Because we have the ideal three already on, what's her face, on Muriel, right? Okay, here is our attuned hero. It's going to be Azura. Oh, I was not expecting that. Looks like an Azura wearing Corin's clothes there. Okay, so we have an axe cavalry type Azura. I was hoping for one of the royals like Ryoma or Xander because I feel like they haven't gotten an alt in a long time. But okay. All right, an yet another Azura alt. Oh, she's an attuned dancer. Is she going to have a new dance skill? Okay, so we have 43 HP. We got 61 attack, 49 speed, 18 defense, and then 28 res. Hold on. Let me just double check one thing. Okay, yeah, she is cavalry axe type. All right, cavalry dancers are always good because they get to move. Oh, wow, she warps as well. That's interesting. Okay, Tri-Path Splitter, 16 might in one range. Enables Canto Distant with a max of 4. Oh, Canto Distant on a Dancer is pretty raw. Then we got Speed Up 3, and then also at the start of turn, if unit is in two spaces of an ally, grants attack and speed up 6, null follow-up, and null panic to unit and allies in two spaces of unit for one turn. For a Dancer, that's pretty bananas. <laughs> that's really nice support for a Dancer to just have that start of turn. Then also, if unit is in three spaces of an ally, grants all stats of five in combat. Okay, changing waters, special dance effect here. 
grants another action to target ally, and target can move one extra space. And also grants incited to target and allies in two spaces to target. Wow, that's... That is a really good dance effect. Bonus movement and incited, and there is... Okay, the, the range limit is on cavalry with a range of two. But melee calves can now get the bonus movement. I don't think that was the case with the original thing that she had. What was it? Like, Raging Waves or something like that? What, whatever her thing was called before. She couldn't do it on calves. It was only plus one movement for flyers and infantry, I think. So now getting it to melee calves as well. All right, then we got Firestorm Boost 3, Attack and Defense Cantrip 3. If Singer Dance is used, inflicts Attack and Defense minus 7 and Sabotage on the foes in Cardinal Directions, a unit, and the target through the next actions. Okay. Is this better than, like, Firestorm Dance and Rock Slide Dance and stuff? I don't know. Huh. Maybe if it had some more debuffs besides just, like, Sabotage. It's okay. It's not, like, terrible, but... <laughs> I feel like Firestorm Dance and Rock Slide Dance are just better. All right, then we got Cross Spur Attack and then Mercy Wing Echo. If an ally's HP is less than or equal to half, unit can move to a space adjacent to that ally. Oh, my God. You want to know what's nuts about this? Wings of Mercy has no inheritance restrictions at all, so you can give this to whoever you want. So wow, you can give this to an armored unit if you want. All of a sudden, they can move wherever they want. You can give this to, like, um, Edelgard units. <laughs> like, Summer Edelgard can move anywhere. Winter Edelgard, she doesn't have to move in a straight line with charge anymore. She can just warp. So, yeah, that, that's pretty good. Pretty nice echo skill there. All right, and then we're, we have her dancing on base core in there. And then, yeah, the Canto Distant. That's fire for a dancer to have that. Yeah, here they're just showing off her ability to warp in. I mean, Warp Bubble is pretty common now, thanks to Valentine Murr. But, like, I, Wings of Mercy Echo is still pretty strong, right? Like, don't get me wrong about that. And doesn't look like anyone special is on the map, so I don't know who the Grand Hero Battle Unit is. But I guess we'll find that out in due time. Oh right, yeah, Hayato is going to be the 4-star focus, as we all expected. They should probably say who the Grand Hero Battle Unit is on here, <laughs> instead of making us have to log into the game. Alright, I guess that's pretty much all there is to say here. I think this banner is a pretty safe skip. You know, there's like nothing here that's really mandatory or important to go for unless you're a big fan of one of these characters and you just want to get them. Azura seems pretty solid for a dancer. But we've got like insane dance oversaturation right now with all of the fairies that we got. Every fairy got like multiple alts and then <laughs> we still have legendary Ninian who's really competent. We got Duo Sigurd, who's still pretty good for summoner duels with his duo skill. So, like, I don't know. Do we really need another Cav Dancer right now? Probably not. But, again, like I said, the plus one movement dance to Cavs, melee types are still pretty good. So, yeah, that's going to wrap us up for this one, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the coverage on this banner. Let me know if you're going to be going in, if you're summoning for any of these characters. And this is your boy Tasho signing out. So, take care, fellas. And I'll catch y'all again on the flip side. Okay, so what do we have here? Candace is the Grand Hero Battle. Okay, I don't even know who Candace is. <laughs> Isn't Candace the boss of Midori's Paralogue? I don't know who Candace is. Yeah, th this is the <laughs> downside of having never played Fates, right? I can't tell who's who. So, yeah, okay. I, I think we can go ahead and wrap up the stream there as well because I have to like, go get the video prepared now. I got to make the thumbnail and stuff. So, guys, it's been real. Thanks to everyone for hopping by. Oh, TurtleBot. What's up, TurtleBot? 
<laughs> Banner is a skip insist out here, erasing Scarlet from Fates at this rate of ignoring her. I don't know who Scarlet is either, <laughs> so I can't I can't co-sign with that turtle bot because I don't even know the character. <laughs> but this whole banner actually has been like a nothing burger for me because I don't know anybody. I know Mozu, but I don't know like this guy. I've never even seen him before. I've never seen Hayato before. I don't know him. And then it's just another Azura wearing Corrin's clothing. <laughs> so, did that happen in the games, by the way? Did Azura ever wear Corrin's clothes? Is that like a plot point? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, because that's that, that seems like an interesting little tidbit there. All right, guys, so take care. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out, and I'll...